Hey guys, Daryl Shergan, Quest for Vape. We are live, and this is a Coil Build Workshop. Today, I am joined by Nick Callister. How are you doing, guys? Nick is a local vape shop expert on building coils, and I've really got to watch him progress and grow his talents and skills over the last about year and a half. Some and um, what he produces now is nothing short of amazing. So I suck at building Clapton's, but I wanted to show this on my show. And I'm also joined here by Zach Marable from Vaping Moderation Channel on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Zach, say hello. What are you vaping on? Good morning, everybody. I am uh, vaping on a mystery mod and uh, the coral tank and inside that some... <clears throat> Man, I'm really loving this Reflections Vapor e-liquid. I've just been vaping the crap out of it for the last, I don't know, two weeks. That's good stuff. It's great stuff. Um, what is your favorite go-to mod that you love to vape on there? Personally, right now, it's my Dosa Keys, my Tomahawk mods, the dual parallel mechanical box. It's like a freight train. I get the amperage that I need to build low, which is usually where I like vaping. Basically, does it all for me right now. Awesome. Why don't you go ahead and give us give us a, a nice hit on that before we get going? Shocking. All right, so I'm experimenting today, doing something new. Uh, I'm going to be doing some close-ups, so watch this, guys. Daryl has uh, stepped up his game a little bit. Uh, when we get down to close-ups, I'm going to be toggling back and forth. But for now, um, we're just going to watch Nick do this build from start to finish. He's prepared some wire, but um, other than that, he's ready to go. You ready to go? I am. Tell us a little about uh, what you're going to build. What I'm going to be building today is a 6-ply .4 ribbon frame staple. The frames are 28 gauge nichrome 80. Uh, the outer wrap is going to be 40 gauge twisted messes nichrome 80. Uh, I personally love this build because it gives you a lot of flavor. There's a lot of surface area for the juice to soak in. And uh, it's just a nice warm vape. When you say a frame staple, could you just define that for people who aren't familiar? Uh, it's called a frame staple because it takes almost a box shape. The ribbon wire is flat. It's uh, 0.4 millimeters by 0.1 millimeter. It's a uh, flat wire. I take six plies and I stand them up vertically. And then it's framed by two pieces of 28 gauge to actually just keep them in that shape. Um, basically, it just looks like a stack of staples going down the line. Do you have one right now that you can show us sort of what it's going to come out looking like? I have a variation of one in this device. This is uh, an alien frame staple. Shouldn't you go to the lower camera for that? Oh, yeah. Good, good point. Let's do that. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, and then there, focus. You can see those nice wide coils because there's multiple strands. I think if you just put it down on the table, the camera will auto focus to it. Okay. A little bit, a little bit more towards him. No, no, back. There you go. Yeah. And then turn it sideways. We had it there for a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds. But anyway, it's going to be, that's what it's going to look like. And as you can see, he's using it on a dual 18650. There it is, unregulated enough mod. And um, this takes a lot of power. It takes a lot of amp draw. But uh, the surface area on that, incredible. Okay, I'll stop hijacking the show. Let me go back up top. And I will be very quiet during this whole process. All right, man, it's your show. Go ahead, Nick. All right, so what I've done is I've straightened out six pieces of ribbon wire, uh, specifically to take off the tension that could possibly come from it so that it won't stretch while I'm building. Ribbon wire does like to fold over on itself. Uh, it does what we call the death roll, where as you're wrapping it, it likes to turn on its side, rendering the coil completely useless. So what I've done is I've taken out some of the slack. I've stretched out two pieces of 28 gauge for the frames, and uh, I've bound one end with 38 gauge wire so that I can prep it to the frames, put it in my swivel, and start wrapping. So uh, I guess what we're going to do now is we're going to cut to my building area, and I'm going to assemble the rest of this coil. Awesome. So these are my two 28-gauge frames. This is my .4 ribbon stretched out, bound at one end by some 38-gauge wire. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the frames one on either side of this ribbon. 
with the ribbon stacked vertically so that you can see the lines running down. This is imperative for the wicking of the coil because you want that capillary action between each strand of ribbon. Every little channel that that juice can sit into, it's going to produce more and more flavor. This is one of my personal favorite builds because A, it's sent me off on a rampage of just modifying and doing different variations of this coil, and it also produces the flavor and the vapor production that I do enjoy. It's also a very warm vape, which is how I like vaping. So right there, you can see that I have the ribbon framed between the two pieces of 28 gauge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip this piece of 38 gauge between my thumb and the wire, and I'm just going to start wrapping by hand just to prep this. The preparation is the most important part of this coil. If it's not done tight enough, it will do the death roll, and you essentially have a useless pile of wire. What I do is at that point, I snip it close to the wire, come back around the opposite way just to make sure that the staples are secured and that should be about good would you mind showing the end there just to, so we could see what you did if possible sure i just found those pieces of ribbon the 38 gauge to the two pieces of 28 gauge so that they stack properly Cool. Now what I'll be doing is this side, I'm not to my swivels. And I just wrap the excess 28 gauge around what's going to be the end of this coil, just so that it stays in place. Now as I go down the line, I just run my fingers down to make sure that the ribbon is stacked properly. And in between those two 28 gauge frames, And I keep the tension on the wire. So at this point, I'm going to be taking more 38 gauge and doing the same thing as I did before. Just giving it a good uh, maybe 20 to 25 wraps, just to ensure that there's enough tension to keep those in the same shape that I'm looking for. Cut off the excess at the end. I'm going to come back around the same way that I did before, just to make sure to have proper tension. Now we have the course prepped. The outer ends of the coil are going to be wrapped in twisted messes, 40 gauge nichrome easy. Yeah, excuse me, I'll be right back. No problem. This is a live build show at a, hold on one second. We are at a vape shop. So the first order of priority is handle the customers. All right, so, and Nick is the man running the shop right now. So sorry for the interruption, but a starter kit is a very high priority. Absolutely. Hey, Zach, you there? Click off. Yeah, I'm just, uh, man, I woke up feeling all sweaty this morning. Take your vitamins, man, because Friday's a big day. Yeah, well, I'm kind of glad I'm getting it out of the way today. By Friday, I'll be feeling better. Morning, ST. Oh, ST's here. See you in the audience. <laughs> What's up, ST? <laughs> ST, if you want to pop in, you're welcome to, or just 
kind of chill, chill and hang out on the sidelines as you often like to do also. Let's say hello to folks in chat who's out there. Say hello to everybody. And a good morning. Kind of chill, chill and hang out on the sidelines. Right off. I got a <laughs> people watching. ST says, what's up, baby? Buddy over there down in Tennessee, STH channel. Friday is the big day. Yep. Yep. We're all flying up to Detroit. Now, a bunch of us who hang out on shows together, and it's going to be a huge crowd of us for a VPX, the Vapors Exhibit show in Detroit, Michigan. Huh. Yeah, it might be patient zero in Detroit. Yeah, that's a good point. I'll make sure everybody tests my e liquid. Oh, you're bringing some? No, nah, I mean, I'll bring my personal stash anyways. I assume there'll be e-liquid there, right? They'll, they'll have e-liquid at this place? They, they will be having uh, some e-liquid there, yes. Correct. Okay, all right. Just making sure. <laughs> you know, at least the door e-liquid is going to be there. Uh, I'm traveling light. I'm bringing like two mods and maybe one or two bottles of juice. That's it. The rest I'll pick up there. Yeah, I'm only bringing two, maybe three mods myself. So this should be cool. Nick builds some incredible, incredible builds. I mean, this is the kind of stuff you see on Instagram and other social media. That's the kind of stuff that you, like, pay a guy 25, 30 bucks, and he mail orders them. So every once in a while when I'm in the area, I love to drop by and get a build done by Nick. Let's get you on the show. People ask about clapping coils and building them is, you know, it's an art form. I suck at it. I'm okay, but I can't I can't work with flattened wire right yet. I've been trying and I, I'm not successful at it. That death roll thing, that's a real thing and it happens. This stuff is so teeny tiny. You like, I mean, these strands are the, they're the thickness of a hair. I hate jabbing myself with stuff like that. But there's guys like Nick that build so nicely. I don't even I don't need to mess around with that. Some people like it, some people don't. Morning, morning, Rhonda. Morning, Michael, Jonathan, B Man, Patrick, John. I saw Nigel was up in here somewhere. Yep, Nigel. Um, yeah. yeah. Rhonda was on like half an hour before the show started. <laughs> Yeah, she's a regular. She's always supporting the shows. And there was uh, another guy. Uh, well, let me scroll back. Just to say, hey, thanks for Bob W. As soon as I posted this, him and Rhonda were out there saying hello, you man. What's up, you man, babes? They like to get in the chat first and be the first person on there saying something. Yeah, they do. Might do a uh, juice giveaway at the end of this for 200 milliliters of juice. So anybody watching, there will be a little bit of a reward at the end, and it'll be an in chat uh, giveaway while we're live. You know, I'm at a vape shop, and Nick works here, and he's running the shop. So even though we were in the middle of a build, uh, for anyone tuning in, is a little lull right now because. First priority is we all vape. We already know how to vape and how to not smoke cigarettes. Somebody who walked in and need the starter kit, that's the most important thing that could be happening at this moment right here. All this other stuff is hobbyist stuff. That's right. Sp spread the good word of the vape. We'll get back to building Clapton coils in a few minutes. But it doesn't take Clapton coils to quit smoking. I see Paul the Cloud Chasing Cyclist is out there in chat. What's up, Paul? Hey, you want to see a really cool mech mod? Check this out. Not an 18650. Uh, this is not a 26650. It's a 18650. Oh, dang. It's just got a really thick. This actually was the design of a door handle in a mansion. This guy ordered 26 of these made, and it's got actual leather wrap. Look at that sucker. The thing weighs about five pounds, and um, 
it's a local guy. He works it for a company, and they, they made 27 of these door handles custom for this guy's mansion. And then he made a bunch of mods out of that same design. Yeah, pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Press fit, press fit 510. Really sweet. I got this last year, and I, I don't carry it around because it's nice. It's like furniture. I'm going to put my mod father cap on there. It doesn't quite matchy matchy, but the brass is brass on brass with leather. <laughs> All right. You need the big dog version, the 30 millimeter. Yeah, yeah. The mod is 25 or 26 millimeters. I haven't measured it. But. <laughs> I will not be carrying that on the plane with me. Damn thing weighs as, as much as my fist. Anyway, thought I would show that. That's pretty cool. nice. All set. All set. All right. Welcome, Welcome back. Thanks for having me. Ready for close up mode? Yes, sir. Back to the coil build. Now, as I was saying before, Twisted meshes, 40 gauge Nichrome 80. This is a really fine gauge wire. It wraps really, really nicely. I personally pr really do love this Twisted meshes wire. Um, 40 gauge, just specifically because it enhances the flavor, because it gives it more surface area, due to the fact that you can do more wraps with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load this into the truck of my drone. Tighten it down over the area that I wrapped it to 38 gauge. Hold attention. Like this. It's framed just the way that I like it. And at this point, just go. Give it a few wraps to ease it in. Once it starts taking the shape, clamp it good. As it's going down, you can kind of see that it's taking the box shape. That's exactly what we're looking for. I just have to make sure that it's in the shape that I'm looking for, which it seems to be. Just keep on trucking.
we have a strand of frame staples. Wow. Nicely done. Huh. As you can see, it kind of gets that box look. It looks like a stack of staples in a box. At this point, it's time to coil the thing, which can actually be the most difficult aspect of it. Let's uh, switch to the straight on angle. Of Now, because the ribbon doesn't like to actually stand up straight, it's a little bit more of a tedious task to be able to fold this over a screwdriver. I take my three millimeter screwdriver that I use for absolutely everything, I pinch the strand between my thumb and the screwdriver, I try to push over it as straight as I possibly can. This is where it can all go wrong because it does like to fold over while you're doing this. Just try to keep it in a straight line wrapping as tightly as possible. We're gonna go for six wraps today. My nylon tip pliers, so I don't chew up the outer wraps. I just orient the coil. So the both leads are facing the same way, and taking out any slack that's left in the coil. And you're left with something like this. Oh, nice. More cream staple. Yes. Nice. The same thing with this other strand. Once again, just pushing straight so there's no side play because this wire does like to have the ribbon fold which will get very annoying if you just wrapped up a really nice strand and it doesn't want to coil for you. Once again the nylon tip pliers, we have the leads. Snip off some excess. These coils are ready to mount. How much do you think it costs just in the wire you used right there, if you had to guess? If I had to guess, given, given that I'm going to be ordering in spools and not in individual allotments for each coil, I'd say the point four ribbon, the 28 gauge wire, and the 40 gauge outers, you're looking at, I would say about $50 for all the materials required. Um, but you can get quite a few sets out of that. That's more than enough material to make, let's say, between 15 and 20 sets. Okay. So now what we'll be doing is mounting these on the Temple Mini. It's going to be uh, what we build it's in there and installing it into that. What are some of your favorite RDAs to use for big coils like this that can handle the heat? I personally prefer two posts. It allows the airflow to flow right through the center, cool down the coil. It also uh, reduces the need for centering a coil. It's generally used for three and four post RDAs. Uh, I do love the twisted messes, but I've also found a new, uh, newer Abbey called the uh, Double Vision that I really do enjoy building on. Dot Mod Petri V2 is absolutely astounding to build on. And uh, a little velocity. Possible for you to so, get that here. Now what I'm doing is I'm just mounting this. Before I anchor down any screws, I'm gonna clip my leads and pull back a little bit so that there's no chance of shorting. And I'll leave that there for a second without terminating any of the leads. Now that I have a kind of an idea of how long the legs are supposed to be, I'll prep these to about the same length. To keep the other legs from moving, I'm going to be manipulating them using another three millimeter screwdriver so that they don't sit up. It makes it a little bit easier to install. Try to keep them about the same distance from the post on each side. 
there's going to be a little bit of room to play. Just anchor down one screw so that they're both in place, but still movable. That temple looks like it might fit on your door handle. Oh, the parking lot behind Dickens. Yeah. <laughs> I, may, I may have to, uh, the only problem, single 18650. Not appropriate for big fat coils like that. Sounds like you need an HB6. Yeah. So now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to terminate the second post. Because we need to orient it so that they are going to distance once again. Just prep these things so that they're ready to fire. Okay, then all of these can be adjusted as they're firing. But that's about what you're looking at. Beautiful. Uh, put my hand in the air with them. Yep. Using a nice DNA regulated device to prevent any accidents from happening. You don't want to pull the stress in the 18650 battery. You can either use a parallel box or I personally prefer the lipos that have the amperage that I do need. You see the little bits of short in there. What wattage do you put that on to pulse? For a coil like this, it has that much mass to it. I usually start around 70 or 80 watts. Start at 50 if you'd really like. Looks like to save a little bit of time. So what I'm doing is I'm just pinching with some ceramic tweezers. I'm going to get the shorts out and get it to heat evenly from the center out. And then it's consistent blow across the top. The coil I'm pinching is getting relatively nicely. We're going to make this other one to launch. Due to the fact that the wire, when it's heating, starts to expand as it cools down the contract, we can tighten down the screws in it. back to it. Get that barrel to glow nice and evenly. Space on this side. We're in business. The vapor coming off of that right now is probably juice that was on the RDA before. And probably some oil from my hands. Which is why I like to actually post these things until you see no vapor or any sort of residue coming off of these coils and they're ready to work. Good to go. Let these coils cool down. Oh, they got some cotton with these things. Awesome. Now, a big reason why I like these coils so much is they can handle a lot of wattage. They give you a lot of flavor, and the wicking is phenomenal. Whereas with alien builds and a lot of lower ohm higher vapor production builds, you have to drip every two to three poles. Something like this gives me about, I would say, five to six without having to re-drip. It's great for me, because pulling off an RDA cap and the living hell out of me, especially when it's every 10 seconds. What I'll do, I'll take probably about an inch wide piece of carbon. Now let me drill it out. Go straight on this other camera. And I rip it in half from the center. The reason I do that is because I roll it so that the press sheet is on the inside that serves as a straw to pull up juice from the well. And your fibers are on the outside, so when you're dripping on the coil, that fiber soaks in everything. And we're just going to gently pull this through. What I like to do is I like to pull it back and forth so it shoulders up on either side of the coil. Do the 
same thing again. Piece of card at once, so the equal length, or as close to it as I possibly can. That was not even, but close enough. Now I'll take that head screwdriver and just put the card underneath, off to the side, so you can get proper airflow underneath the cord. You don't have to fill up the whole juice well with that, not at all. Just enough so that it touches the base of that one. They have it. Thanks, it is. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah. Can juice it up and give it a pull? Yeah, yeah. What do we, what do we got over here? With, uh, some grayscale tiramisu. It's a local Long Island company. They have three flavors, one being a peach blueberry yogurt, another being an Oreo cheesecake, and this tiramisu flavor. All three are phenomenal flavors. Uh, I think these uh, frame staples will give it a really, really nice touch. Sounds incredible. What do you say they have an Oreo? Oreo cheesecake. Can I eat that? I do. Oh, Oreo cheesecake. The amount of juice this RBA can handle. The coil is still. If you drip straight on the coil, you probably get it two to three millimeters without even touching the cotton. Because of all the surface area of the wire, there's quite a force of juice. So that's really good. Now, at this point, the build is reading 0.14. I think you probably want 130 watts. So 130 watts. It's not in focus. There we go. Oh. The time is minimal because we're putting a good amount of voltage to this. Saturate this down a little bit. Yes, I'm going. Nice little fun. Bam. Nicely done. Nicely done. Now I like the airflow choked off because I like a hot thing. Awesome. The flavor is ridiculous. Even down to the espresso flavor in that thermosy. Wow. Now, the one thing that I do love about these builds is they amplify every note in the flavor. So if it's a really phenomenal juice with no notes that I dislike, I'm getting every last bit of that flavor. On the other side of the coin, if there's a juice that has an element that I'm really not a huge fan of, it's going to amplify that. So I'm pretty selective with what juices that I put on there. This flavor. Those wonders. I love it. every note of this juice and everything that comes out of it is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm very, very picky. That sounds good. Tiramisu. Tiramisu is an Italian dessert with vanilla custards, espresso, chocolate, ladyfinger cookies, even a little hint of cinnamon. It's a good idea. <laughs> cool, man. Well, thanks for showing us that build. That was definitely uh, not a beginner build, but you know, have at it. And definitely a good one. That was the one I chased for a very long time. Where do you, <clears throat> excuse me? Where do you get that juice? Uh, this is being distributed locally on Long Island. I have a friend, Sean, that's actually doing the distribution. If you want, put in touch with Daryl. I'll put you in touch with my friend, Sean. Okay. I know the guys that make it. 
it's uh it's just like starting up now it's starting to make its way around i got these samples from uh my friend sean who's a distributor and uh over the past three days i haven't set this down their uh blueberry peach yogurt is phenomenal it's nice and light there's no overbearing tones in it the peach is actually really nice i usually get an artificial peach taste from a lot of peach flavors they did it very very well all lab made iso certified properly uh Nice. There you go. Got juice reviewed live too. <laughs> That's it. Sounds good. Sounds delicious. Awesome, Nick. Hey, real quick, I wanted to talk about something else interesting. Um, Kilo E Liquids put out this card here with battery safety, vape safety. Let me hold this up. Get it in focus so you can go back and read. Isn't this cool? Have you guys seen this? You seen it? It's awesome. The words really? could not express how important that actually is. Nice. You have all sorts of news articles saying that a vaporizer exploded in somebody's pocket because he had an 18650 battery in between some change. When the battery is completed in the terminal, even if it's two pieces of coin, you're ultimately firing that battery to no resistance, which is not safe. Kilo actually put the footwork in, made a nice little card, very easy to understand on what proper battery safety is when not to use a battery if there's metal exposed on the side or any part of the battery where the sleeve should actually be. And uh, they really nailed it. I saw that for the first time and I, my jaw dropped. I'm like, wow, somebody really nailed it? Yeah. And made it easy enough to understand that somebody who's just of legal vaping age, just getting into it, can understand very simply battery safety, which is the most important thing that we could possibly ever worry about because these batteries are very volatile. You're not treating them with the proper care and respect. They do tend to explode. It's a battery. It's a lithium-ion cell. But when it's used safely, there's no problems whatsoever. Vaping is something that is garnering a lot of attention, and when used properly, is a great way to quit smoking. But if it's used the wrong way, it can be potentially damaging. And I don't want to see this taken away because it's handled improperly. Just the same as if you drive a car at 100 miles an hour on the wrong side of the road, an accident's probably going to happen. But if you use a car properly, you can get to and from work, to and from wherever you're trying to go in a safe fashion. It's all on how you handle it. From your set of guns myself. That's awesome. So, there we go. Vape safety. Uh, what else we got cooking? It is pretty early still. We have some time. I can bore you guys some more. Um, Want to do a juice giveaway? We can do that. You don't have any of that stuff to give away, do you? I can spare a couple bottles. You sure? Yeah, do that. I know a guy. You know a guy? No know a guy. How about, wait, Red? Can you grab one of each of those bottles so I can show it up to the camera? I'm going to have to drop out so I can win this. All right. <laughs> this is the blueberry peach yogurt. Tiramisu that we were just vaping on. And this is the Oreo cheesecake. I may have to fight Daryl to keep my last bottle of this. Okay, so we're going to do a giveaway for one of each of these bottles. It's 90 mils of juice. You just have to pay for shipping. That's all. Eight bucks. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, let's go ahead and find somebody randomly out in chat. Not random. We're going we're gonna to ask a question. Okay. For you guys out in chat, let me just pull up, refresh my feed here. Everybody ready? We got 34 people watching. Can you Sometimes people watch my stuff. All right. Eight back, eight, Sydney Shaw says eight bucks to New Zealand. No. If it's out of the U.S., it's like $35. So I'm sorry. If that's too rich for your blood, just stay out of it. But in the continental United States, it's eight bucks. I ship priority with uh, tracking and $50 insurance. So the question is, what is a frame? Clapton coil. What does the frame mean? What does the frame mean? We did go over this earlier in the show. I get it. I got an easier. Yes, I will ship it to your brother in New Jersey. Uh, I got an easier question. What's his name? Jane <laughs> Smith, no, that is not correct. Outer wire, sort of. Uh, support support oh okay support okay we'll leave that standing support bob w got it support so you frame want to explain that 
It's the wire that actually supports the ribbon wire stacked vertically, if you're toppling over. So support is correct. That works. All right. Bob W. Right? Bob W. Email me, quest for vape at gmail.com. That's Q-U-E-S-T, the number four, vape at gmail.com, no spaces. Um, and we'll coordinate and get that out to you. So that's 90 mils of juice. And then, um, you know what? I have some Black Hat e-liquids uh, from up in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. And um, I'm going to ask a question. Whoever answers it is going to get two bottles. They're 100 milliliter size bottles each. I'm going to do a review in the next couple of days. Um, I still have more. They gave me like seven bottles of juice to give away. So I'm going to give away two right now. The question is, that guy that just did the build, what is his name? Somebody already put it in the chat. Somebody, well, then put it again. Because it starts right now. 200 milliliters of juice. In three milligram nicotine strength. Sorry. Nick Callister, Shane Smith got it. Shane Smith, you won. Good job, buddy. Paying attention. This is Nick Callister, and you can find him on Instagram. If you're sensitive, there's about to be an F bomb. He is Fuck Nick722. <laughs> Fuck Nick722 on Instagram. And um, he's a good local guy, expert builder, gaining some prominence. So um, Shane Smith, email me. That's cool. Shane finally won a uh, giveaway. He's been hanging around my channel commenting for a while. Uh, quest for vape at gmail.com. You got, uh, what I'll do is I'll give you a choice of which flavors and you pick two of them, okay? All right, congratulations there. And we've got about 18 minutes left. Why don't you guys start pumping out some questions? If you want, we'll do a little Q&A. Anybody want to have a question they want to ask Nick? Who's got any questions to ask Nick? You got a guy who works at a vape shop. He's been vaping for a couple years. Um, expert coil builder. You can ask him anything. Except for my social security number. That I won't give. <laughs> at least your birthday, right? And your name? I mean, Holy. Instagram, July 22nd. I'll tell you, <laughs> that tiramisu flavor is phenomenal. I'm vaping that right now. That sounds ridiculous. I'd definitely like to get a hold of some. Russell Broken One, go ahead. Ask your quit smoking question. You haven't quit smoking yet, Russell? You've been around my channel for a while. In the meantime, Daniel P. asks, new to vaping, what is there to watch out for when just starting out? Any 101 tips? Go ahead. As far as vaping, um, Generally, what bottles you're going to put a pre-built coil tube on the tank. Uh, that's very important because you don't want to fucking out the coil. Um, when it comes to building, just everything for me, I always went for symmetry, something that was clean, no hot spots. Um, there are plenty of builders all over YouTube, Instagram that will give you a lot of useful tips. Um, there was a video reviewer that did useful videos. I won't mention his name because I don't feel like being ostracized forever. Grim Green is a solid resource, though. Grim oh, yeah. Green is a very useful resource for oil building and just vaping in general. The man has a solid view and a really oh, good handle on how these things work. Good tips, good tips. Okay, what is the largest wire you use for clackings? Um, I've used 24 gauge as cores on uh, used clackings. I generally don't like to go bigger than that because the resistance drops a little too low and uh, it's more likely to burn a wick at that point. Uh, that was asked by Michael Haven. Sydney Shaw, is my vape in Ceramicus coil still going? It is, but I don't vape that tank very often. But um, I did. I have the um, three max Scylla tank, and I busted out the, uh, the the Ceramicus again just to see that the two coils don't interchange very easily. Um, and I didn't want to play around with it. And I don't think the chimney height is the same either. So, uh, but I think the coil is still functional. I just, I don't vape it every day. Now, uh, Wanda McGee asks, how long have I been building? I've been building clappings and things of that nature for about a year to a year and a half. Um, 
building simple coils probably for closer to two years. It all started with a 24 gauge five wrap on my, uh, I think it was a total clone on a Nemesis clone. It started out very simple. I didn't have much money at my disposal, but um, I had to build out another shop, teach me how to do a 24 gauge five wrap, and kind of just went nuts with it. I like working with my hands. Mr. Cobra Fire asks, what is your favorite mod? Ooh, that's I think a tough we one. answered that already. The go second, but what is your favorite mod? It varies. For um, for a tube mod, I'm regulating the mechanical. I love my Amerivate Manhattans. The things that have been out of production for close to two years, I managed to snag a couple of them. I absolutely love these things. All these companies are coming out with these hybrid mods, harder than hell, and I still always find my way back to my Manhattan. Manhattan P1 from Amerivate. As far as my builds, as far as frame staples go, um, I've had my ups and downs with regulated. The DNA chip is phenomenal. Some of the housings, I'm not a huge fan of. I always go back to my mechanicals. My Dosec keys is my everyday mod. It's a dual 18650 parallel mod. Totally mechanical, there's not a wire or anything. It's like a truck. It works exactly the way I want it to. Cool, cool. Let's see. We, uh... You know, Russell Broken wanted you to answer a question, Daryl. Oh. <laughs> he was asking, how long after you quit smoking does it take for you to not want a cigarette? And I responded that if with the right nick level, about two weeks. And uh, he said he's been quit for seven days now and just wants to know what your opinion is, Daryl. Okay, thank you, Russell. Uh, that's an awesome question. It took, uh, it took a couple of weeks. And finding the right mix of juices that I liked enough that, um, like, I wanted a cigarette those first couple of weeks. And, um, and I didn't have one. So I was a cold turkey guy with vaping as kind of a supplement because the juices I was vaping, I wasn't crazy about, but I didn't know that. It was kind of like when you ran out of cigarettes and you bummed something off of somebody, you would smoke it anyway, but you didn't like it. That's how I felt about vaping in the beginning. And then I got, um, I think it was the general, it was a vanilla custard from um, Epicus Nebula. It was Phenomenal my first flavor. old, like when I vaped that, I was like, oh my God, I wanted that more than I wanted a cigarette. And I was off to the races. Um, another thing, if you're having cravings and maybe your nicotine level is not high enough, um, but it, you know, everybody's different. For some people it was a couple of days, for some people it was, for me it was a few weeks. It was at least two to three weeks. For me personally, um, I had been a Newport smoker for about 14 years, about a pack and a half a day. Um, I had started vaping using iTaste SVD and uh, the Nautilus right. Mini Tank, and the thing worked phenomenal but I still had that craving for a cigarette. About three days into vaping, I had lit up a new board thinking that it was gonna be the greatest thing ever because I hadn't had a cigarette in a couple of days and I was thoroughly disappointed with the flavor and just how I felt after having the cigarette and that for me was the last time I'd had a cigarette because I wasn't happy with it anymore. I always loved the taste of my new ports and then I'm vaping uh, it's, uh, a strawberry watermelon flavor and that tasted so much better than any cigarette could have. It was the disappointment that completely turned me off. It's not from the fact that I couldn't breathe that low. So in the beginning, you may want to, if you haven't hit your all-day vape, a flavor that just gets you the way you're like, I'd rather do this than, and cigarettes just, just get shoved off to the side, keep playing around and trying different juices until you find that. And it may take a while. you got to figure it this way. Cigarettes cost me $10 a pack back then, so it was a $15 a day habit. I would buy various flavors of juices every couple of days just to experiment. And I would say uh, Zample Box and the like, like Zample Box where you get random flavors every month is a really great idea if you haven't figured out what your vape is yet. That's where I found my first all-day vape was in a Zample Box. And, you know, if you haven't found it, if you really haven't found a flavor that doesn't make you want cigarettes anymore, then try out a Zample Box or two and see if that doesn't come with uh, something that broadens your horizons enough to quit cigarettes. Really good point. It's a really good point. Those um, monthly subscriptions give you the ability to try so many varieties. That, but uh, stick with it, Russell. The main thing is, as time goes by and your addiction to all the other stuff from cigarettes will, will decrease over time. So one way or the other, you're going to either fall, find a juice that you fall in love with, or you're just, your habit of smoking is going to become a distant memory and vaping is going to just be in your daily life. Um, uh, let's jump back to some questions here. Back to building. Hey, how you doing, buddy? What's up? Want to be on YouTube? Sure. You're live right now. 
Say hello to, uh, see that green light right there? Yep. Just look in there and wave hello. How's it going? What's your name, man? Jack. How long have you been vaping? been vaping for probably a year and a half, but I took a break and I went back to it. Okay. Okay. Were you a smoker? Are you a smoker? I was a smoker for 10 years. Okay. You still smoke? Nope. How long did it take you when you started vaping the first time to put cigarettes aside so you didn't want a cigarette anymore? I would say the obsession was lifted fairly quickly. Fairly quickly means a couple weeks. A couple weeks? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, man. No Appreciate problem. it. This is live, so we jump on here. Hopefully you ordered that. Um all right, let me let me grab some more questions. What about you, Zach? Any uh thoughts, comments? Yeah, I mean for me for me, uh it was almost the next day, but that was because I really, really didn't want to smoke cigarettes anymore. For me, I it was like the diff, for me it was on a day that I was ready to just put down the cigarettes for good and I just happened to pick up a vaporizer and it did provide the nicotine to make me not start freaking out in like three hours. And with that I was able to sort of parlay that to um but I, I started a sample box and a nick nick pick really early and uh I think there was one box before that that I tried as well, and those really brought me flavors that made me not even think about wanting a cigarette anymore. Oh, man. Hey, um, G. Rizzle brings up a really good point also. He says, this is G. Rizzle in chat, I found that I really stopped feeling the urge to smoke when I got my first RDA. I have to agree with you on that. He says he had a K-Fun that didn't do it for him, and then new sub -ohm tanks are much better than the K-Funs, and more like an RDA, that's true. And when I started vaping, the best tank out there was the Nautilus. I mean, that was like this shit. Or yeah. Tanger, like Tanger um, Aero Mega Tank. But um, so the quality of sub-ohm tanks now are so good that that helps. I personally, um, until I got my first RDA and started dripping, uh, that's when that really ended the cigarette even, even craving for me because then I could try all the different types of juices and the flavor on an RDA was just so much better. Oh, different types of bullets too. Yeah. Oh, you make it big whatever you want at that point. I forgot all about smoking when I started dipping. But now I mean a good sub ohm tank, you get any number of I'm not gonna go top any manufacturers right now. There's so many on the market, there's dozens that you can pick up a sub ohm tank now and just like you've done with the sub ohm the buildable tanks are phenomenal too. Everything's come so far in the past two years. What's become available has made it more affordable and actually really more enjoyable to actually be. When I first got into it, the uh, Hanger Aero Tank Mega was that tank at the moment. And now looking back at it, it's like everything has come so far that that's an afterthought now. Yes, yeah. Oh, Zach is presented. Thank you for letting me know. Am I presented? We like looking at Zach. <laughs> I'm so technical. You know, I got a little more technical on the, on the show today, swapping back and forth camera angles. But. I guess I forgot. I lapsed. I lapsed. So now we're uh, now we're back in from West Flip Hey Zach, could you say something real quick? Yeah, I um, I was gonna say I started on the Pro Tank myself, and then like in these days, man, if I could get a Crown, if I could have started on a Crown Tank, that would have been just ridiculous. I'm yeah. sure I would. Cardamoms are gone. Yeah, yeah, they're gone. And you know, that's like. For anybody who started vaping back in 2000, before about a year ago, before early 2015, there was just such a wide variety and assortment of stuff on the market, but no manufacturer, the, the industry didn't even demand enough for manufacturers to make a good quality product. So you had you had your, your mech mods and drippers, you had your Jenny tanks, you had your little frustrating starter oh, ego Jenny style. Jenny tanks, the bane of my existence. Which you had to talk about this build. I mean, you had to be so meticulous with your builds with Jenny tanks. The wire mesh. Wire mesh, wicking them. Um, vaping on them was a talent of its own. You had to develop a skill set to tilt the thing back. Now it's just so easy. Rock a tank, put a new coil in every like five to seven days or so. That's why when these sub tanks came out, um, I'm just so thrilled with just about everyone on the market because they give you a good deal without having to learn a new skill set. I had a I had a Jenny working for a little while, 
and I, I always have a few mods going. I'm always switching between them. And what happened was I picked up an RDA once, and I tilted it back to take a vape and drank a bunch of juice okay. because the, <laughs> the RDA doesn't care that you're tipping it up. It's just like, here you go. Here's all the juice I was holding. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, John D says from the camera angles, I'm sitting Nick standing. I look like a midget. That's okay. I actually am a little person in real life. I was in The Hobbit. I was an extra. <laughs> I did not get chosen for Sam. Uh, what are we in this? The film actors. All right. If I stand, then I'll be out of frame because I'm a little taller than me. I'm not going to promote any juice woods, for, uh, any juice uh, from, from out in California or anything like that. No, why would you do that? Oh, by the way, what's this symbol we got on your sweatshirt here? Nick? This is Solo Society Kings. What's it's a, that? It's a clothing company that donates profits to uh, towards advocacy groups, whether it be Spada or Casa. It's um, it's about handling vaping in a uh, respectable light, not carrying yourself as uh, a douche. Exactly. Basically, just handling it so that we can hold on to this because this is helping a lot of people quit smoking. So you know? it's like so it's like the old mafia. Pretty much, very similar concept. Um. We Their just, motto is try really, 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 really hard not to be a douche. Exactly. It's uh, that's respect. Not. Respect. Similar concept, though. It's uh, <laughs> There's a lot of people that will go out to like a restaurant or blow clouds indoors or go to a movie theater, and it's just we want to hold this in a respectable light because we're in a pretty actionable position. The FDA is uh, in regulations, and we have big tobacco taking whatever shots that they can with us at any given turn. What we want to do is hold it in a respectable light and actually like – Amplify the sense of community that we actually like want to help each other out rather than just Making this a commercialized business, which essentially it has become but it's not always for the worst end of things It's just about community and respect it's, That's all it really is and that's all it really needs to be Next a, few another few right obnoxious, a few obnoxious vapors will ruin it for the rest of us oh, that's for sure. all, all it takes is that one little outlet of something that was not handled properly, and everyone just hops all over it. There was uh, something running on the news about a vaporizer exploding in somebody's pocket. There was a battery between some chains. But because that was actually uh, tied to vaping somehow, that's a bad mark on our entire industry. And that's something that we're uh, looking towards eradicating. Because we, we don't need any more flack than we've already got. This is helping a lot of people quit smoking. I, I don't need to statistics. I have plenty of friends that have set down the cigarettes for good because of something like this. It's a much healthier alternative. It's not the same as a proactive habit of going to the gym, but for me to get my nicotine and not be inhaling carcinogens and tar, I'm happy. You have a lot to say today. So what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do about Florida? What's the what's the game plan for Florida? Because most of the states have pretty much gentlemen vapors in them enough to control the population anyways but florida is just so far out there that i'm afraid they will never be able to get a handle on the crazy shit coming out of florida what, what do you guys think uh at that point you're talking politics which is not my particular area of expertise but um what it comes down to is florida has a viable vaping market there's a lot of stores around miami to the point where it's like almost on every corner you're seeing shops and you're seeing a lot of companies come up very well i think the argument to make at that point would be shutting down small business doesn't really help anyone um, to be able to shut down something that could be taxable and actually really give back what is needed, I think that'd be a much more viable option than just shutting it down and basically making it seem as if it's some sort of demonized hobby. It's like they're doing in Indiana right now. Exactly. Like this is an interest of public health, but also an economic interest. Like if you want your state to be able to make taxable dollars and tax it, but don't ban it. It doesn't make anybody better off. You're sending people back to cigarettes, which is killing people. And that's actually a known fact. You're talking about lung cancer. It's, it's not like a guess here that cigarettes have been causing lung cancer. It's a proven fact. Let's go for public health and actually like feeding the economy, which we desperately need at this point. It's, it's a logical choice, but it's an illogical argument against it. All I would say is that like, as far as Florida goes, get involved in like activism with it. There's plenty of groups out there that are willing to stand up and defend our rights, but if you don't get involved with them, you're not even asking for the help as your ship is sinking. And you guys are in New York now, huh? Yep. Right now? So you guys are in the state that uh, that judge said that uh, smoking is not vaping. It's not like, in a it's the same thing as smoking, which is a step in the right direction. But unless, it's unless it's followed up upon thoroughly, 
that's just a part-time decision. Yeah, the battle's not won just because of that, but that's a nice start. That's a, a nice step forward, precedent. absolutely. Um, yeah, they call that they call it precedence in the courtroom that in the future other people can just refer back to that as you know the decision that was made hopefully and be respected hopefully it'll be respected if you could get that at a like a federal level that would be a really nice step forward because the state it's literally just one of 50. there's a yeah. lot of states that are trying to combat vaping which i don't see as a, a worthy battle but that's just me i'm just a dude from new york who likes building coils <laughs> Well, guys, thanks a lot for joining us here today. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Nick. Thanks for having me, guys. And um, we're going to wrap up and sign off here. Let's go ahead and trip and take a vape and then say goodbye to all these good people. Thank you very much. Quest for Vape, bringing you live workshops every Tuesday from noon to 1 o'clock. I will be live streaming in Detroit at VPX this coming weekend. I'll be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And um, collaborating with Zach and a bunch of other guys when we're up there. Take safety, everybody. Stop.